Hey, I'm finally back with a video. I'm still very busy right now and don't really have the time for consistent 20 minute videos where I just talk way too much about a show. But with the conclusion of Mushoku Tensei's first core season 2, I just wanted to make a really quick video going over the content and its core. And just asking straight up, has this season lived up to the first season so far? And while I still love this season and this show as a whole, unfortunately, I believe the answer is no. Let's just go over the whole show and dissect why that is. The first four episodes cover what people call the Quagmire arc, where Rudius built a name for himself after leaving to find Zenith. I still stand by my stance that I think episode 1 is the best opening you could have had to this season, covering basically a mini character arc in Rudius, where he manages to find the strength to start bouncing back after having his heart broken. Do go check that out if you're interested. But episode 2 is where things started to feel a bit… off. Mainly in the pacing department. The episode started off nicely, showing how Rudius has been working on himself after getting that motivation boost since that last episode. But then, the show just spends way too much screen time on a random commission where Counter Arrow and Step Leader have a confrontation. Now, I didn't really feel a problem in the moment while watching this scene, but when you factor in the fact that there was this really abrupt cut that showed Counter Arrow suddenly losing two members in an off-screen commission, and how only 15 seconds was spent on the quote-unquote fight to save Sada, it really felt like the priority list was off by just a bit there. Episode 3 picks it back up however, fully portraying Rudy's struggle with his mental condition and how he is really nowhere near fully healed yet. I was generally pretty happy with this episode, if not just kinda ticked off at the fact that there was the typical anime misunderstanding caused by a complete coincidence, not to mention it was pretty damn substantial to the plot. But there's a more frustrating case of anime coincidence later on, so I'll forgive this for now. And episode 4 was just kind of a Passover episode to lead us into the university arc, so I don't really have much to say there. Generally, I think the season started off on a good note. It wasn't anything super flashy, but neither was the start of season 1. Like season 1, it was just full of good character interactions and realistic character moments we can all relate to, or at least understand. Again, it did take a slight stumble on the pacing, but it wasn't really anything super offensive, at least to me. The university arc, however, is where I do start to have some issues with this season. To sum it up, episodes 5 to 8 is what I would call unfocused. Let's just go over the content in these episodes really quickly. Episode 5 mainly covers Rudius settling in the university, with the main conflict being a misunderstanding over panties. Ugh. Episode 6 focuses on Xenoba's figure obsession, and the emotional weight comes from Julie and her unfortunate circumstance. Episode 7 basically just introduces Linnea and Persena to us, and tells us how they started following Rudius around. And finally, Episode 8 kicks off the romance between Ellen Elise and Cliff, and ends with the introduction of Badigadi to the plot. Maybe you've already noticed, but there's nothing really connecting these things together. The show just suddenly turned into a slice of life anime with a school setting, which, you know, isn't the freshest thing on the block. But I can already hear you asking, what about the start of season 1 then? It was pretty much slice of life there up until the turning point, right? And you'd be right. That's why what I have a problem with isn't slice of life itself. Hell, some of my favorite shows have slice of life elements. What I had a problem with here is the abrupt shift into the slice of lifestyle with no concrete purpose. In Season 1, even when Rudius was just growing up in Buena Village and later got a job in tutoring Eris, there was this overarching theme of growth. This consistent idea that this story is about someone that was utterly despicable, slowly turning over a new leaf in this new world. Despite the lack of super high stakes and intense world building, we were still hooked because we wanted to see how Rudius would slowly grow into a better person. But in the university arc, there was no real goal to be had here. Rudy's family was basically all confirmed to be relatively safe, so that goal has been pushed down the priority list. Rudius came here to look for a cure for his ED, and to research the cause of the mana disaster, but we don't really see him doing either of those things either. Even though we are getting introduced to one character after another just like in Season 1, we don't really have a focus this time around, and thus, I didn't really know where the story was going. After every episode, I just asked the same question in my head. Okay, and then what? Honestly, if I have to be harsh, 
Episode 9 falls into this unfocused problem too, because it just presents this whole new world changing conflict out of nowhere, and just never bringing attention to it in the rest of the season. But of course, this episode was hard carried by the amazing direction and voice acting, so I can't say I have a problem with it specifically. And to this point about the arc feeling unfocused, there will definitely be people that bring up Sylphie. And yes, of course, this whole arc was obviously leading up to the reunion between Sylphie and Rudeus, but there's a difference between the arc leading up to it and building towards it. And this arc was definitely not doing the latter anywhere enough. There's a really simple issue that Sylphie just did not get enough screen time, and a whole lot of attention was put on things that have no connection to Sylphie. But let's ignore that for now. What I really want to talk about is how Rudeus had basically zero agency in this supposed goal of the season. Rudeus did not recognize Sylvie in the beginning, and he's not going to magically recognize her out of nowhere as long as she keeps her sunglasses on. So, as the protagonist of this story, there was literally nothing he could do to work towards the goal of this arc. I don't think I need to tell you how boring a completely passive protagonist is. But what about Sylvie? Since she does know who Rudeus is, if we go from her perspective, we could follow her journey to try and reunite with Rudeus, right? Oh, never mind, she's too scared to tell him. So what we have now are two completely passive parties, neither of them really working in any capacity towards this arc's goal at all. This is a problem because all we can look forward to now is a freak accident that will give these two the push they need to reunite. We were literally made to wait for a deus ex machina, to solve our problems. That just doesn't feel good. It pulls me out of the story, knowing that the only person that can break through this stalemate is the writer himself, who now has to write in something out of nowhere just to make the story happen. And guess what? I was right, and it was a freak accident that acted as a catalyst for the change. Remember when I said there was a more frustrating case of anime coincidence in this season than the scene with Sada? Yeah, this is what I was talking about. Look. I definitely still enjoyed my time watching the university arc. Radius' whole character dynamic is just simply way too interesting for me to not be having fun whenever he's on screen. And like I said, it's not like I don't like Slice of Life, but the lack of a concrete goal really hurt this arc, and it just made this story feel directionless and all over the place until that freak accident happened and made Sylvie take the spotlight again. Of course, when Sylvie did take the spotlight, everything was great again. We now have a goal that at least one character could actively work towards, and the entire focus is put on that goal. Episode 12 was the best finale I could ask for, fully showcasing Rudeus' trauma, and how Sylphie is the one to help him start healing from everything. I mean, what a damn journey Rudeus has went on, going from a complete degenerate to being traumatized by the very thing he wished for, and now starting to heal from that trauma. Despite the unfocused story that came before it, I couldn't really ask for a better ending. All in all, if we have to compare this core to Season 1, yeah, this doesn't really live up to Season 1. Sure, you could say it did a lot of setup for the future plot since they did introduce a lot of new characters, but aside from the very beginning and end, the story was just not compelling enough to fully grab my attention like it did in Season 1 due to its unfocused nature. For Mushoku Tensei's standards, I say this season was mid to above average. But guess what? If it's mid to above average in Mushoku Tensei standards, that just means it's a good to great in normal anime standards. I'm not gonna sit here and pretend like I didn't still have a blast watching this show. I'm comfortable in saying that this anime is still very much one of the best in my mind. It's just that this season hasn't been quite the refined masterpiece that season 1 was. I just hope that the story picks back up to its season 1 glory in the next core, and resists reading the light novel in the meantime. Lord have mercy. We must stay focused, brothers. We must stay focused. Anyway, I gotta end this before I make this video way too long, so that I don't post this any much later than it already is. Like and subscribe, check out my streams, and the clip channel in the description where I upload clips from my streams. We've also recently opened a Discord server where you can hang out and chat, where I would show up from time to time to talk to you guys. So check the link in the description if you're interested. I'm gonna get some milk from the store now. See you again when I'm back. Bye!